Among the small ruminant diseases, respiratory infections are having crucial role in the economy of sheep and goat husbandry. Incidence of pneumonia is in between 20 to 30 percent, and this is more in lambs. In goats, the mortality is very less. Uh, but the respiratory involvement is 20 to 30 percent. Generally, the lung uh, is described as hub of pathogen. Another uh, reason is that why lung is vulnerable for disease because the blood circulation in the lungs, that blood vessels, uh, the cell wall is very, very uh, uh, thin. So the pathogen uh, will lesion and it will cause the pneumonia. Uh, in sheep, this pneumonia problem is uh, more than uh, compa uh, if you compare to other species because sheep is grazer and not browser. As the infection comes to uh, nasal cavity, upper respiratory tract, uh, the pathogen will flourish there and that infection will go to the downside and uh, the respiratory system will affect. Pneumonia is uh, inflammatory response of bronchioles and alveoli alveoli to the infective agents and it will result in consolidation of the lungs. It will cause by multiple etiology that is virus, bacteria, mycoplasma, parasite, fungus and for uh, causing the pneumonia predisposed factors are uh, environmental stress, physiology, uh, physiological stress, overcrowding, powdery feed, then dust, lot of predisposing factors are there which are responsible for pneumonia. So the certain threshold dose of microorganisms, host susceptibility and non-specific defense mechanisms are reached, lung defense mechanism are compromised and allowing disease to occur in the animals. Diagnosing pneumonia clinically is very easy. Uh, so, we are diagnosed pneumonia by nasal discharge followed by watery and thick mucus. Then fever will be there, uh, reddish coloration of ocular mucus and ocular discharge will be there. Uh, respiratory di uh, distress will be there. And uh, if you use stethoscope, you can find hyper hypernia, polypnea and dyspnea. Apart from this, there is increased abdominal respiration in advanced stages. When we do postmortem examination, you will find the normal lungs like this. You can see here trachea, it is very clear. Then uh, these are uh, lung lobes, these are very clear. Uh, sheep has seven lobes, uh, these are three and these are three. These are uh, uh, cr uh, left cranial, uh, medial, then uh, this is caudal or diaphragmatic lobes, this is cranial. Uh, medial and uh, uh, diaphragmatic lobe and one lobe is there that is called lateral lobe. So there are seven lobes and uh, this is normal lung. In abnormal lungs, you will find such type of discoloration. This is due to consolidation. This is bilateral consolidation. With both sides, the lung is affected with pneumonia. So uh, you will also get the lesion like this. This is uh, uh, severe hemorrhages in lungs. Uh, you will find this hemorrhage in trachea also, hemorrhage and congestion. Many times uh, you will get bilateral pneumonia. Both, both the side, uh, this pneumonia is affected. Then unilateral uh, pneumonia uh, in cranial lobes. And uh, then consolidation in caudal lobes. Uh, pulmonary abscesses also you will find. Then sometimes you will find red hepatization of lungs and sometimes uh, entire lung will be congested. If you cut the lungs, you will find uh, this type of micro abscesses. Sometimes uh, there is micro nodules, white nodules also there. Here you can find this is, these are uh, nodules and uh, uh, there is severe congestion and edema of the lung. Then you will also find gunt pleura uh, and uh, uh, there is adhesion between lungs, uh, heart and thoracic cavity due to pleuritis. 
in septicemic cases along with pneumonia you will find uh, this petechial hemorrhages and uh, also pericardial effusion or hydropericardium this is the classification of pneumonia uh, that is uh, acute fibrinous bronchopneumonia chronic fibrinous uh, bronchopneumonia acute interstitial pneumonia chronic interstitial pneumonia then bronco interstitial pneumonia acute suppurative bronchopneumonia chronic suppurative bronchopneumonia vermeous pneumonia aspiration pneumonia and open pulmonary adenomatosis along with these uh, other lesions are atelectasis of lung hemorrhage and emphysema so now i will share my experience uh, at cswri avikanagar uh, we have investigated pneumonia one uh, study we conducted um, and we collected pneumonic lungs from sheep 79 and goats eight pneumonic lungs collected and uh, these uh, samples were processed for histopathology then cultural e examination uh, then identification of etiology and uh, for other purpose we find various stages of pneumonia on postmortem here uh, you can see this is initial stage of uh, uh, pneumonia here exudate is there but it is reddish type uh, predominated by congestion so this is initial stage of pneumonia and if you see here this is red hepatization and uh, uh, the exudate may be dominated by blood these are soft co consolidation but in next stage severe stages uh, these are hard lungs lobes are very hard and uh, you will feel like liver so it is gray hepatization then also we have seen some suppurative uh, pneumonia with microabscesses and in some cases th there is severe pneumonia with abscess uh, then uh, there is a, a froth inside the lungs on histopathology we have classified this pneumonia into acute fibrinous bronchopneumonia suppurative chronic bronchopneumonia acute interstitial pneumonia acute pulmonary congestion and aspiration pneumonia on pathology uh, we find that in acute fibrinous pneumonia a lot of aggregates of oat cells here also you can find here also you can find these are all oat cells uh, this is the characteristic features of pascherella pneumonia along with that fibrinous bronchopneumonia and interstitial pneumonia also there in some cases particularly in lambs we find aspiration pneumonia in some cases uh, there are suppurative pneumonia these are suppurative foci on histopathology we identified bipolar organisms in the lung tissues by sp uh, special staining bipolar staining then uh, we performed pcr uh, amplification uh, by using kmt one gene and uh, confirmed pascherella maltosida also uh, we conducted uh, pcr for further characterization and typing of this pascherella maltosida and uh, uh, using various genes and we found that uh, out of eight isolates of uh, this pascherella maltosida six were of uh, capsular type a and two were of capsular type b b was absent then uh, this uh, capsular type a pascherella maltosida uh, characterized by uh, another genes for further classifications then uh, we got uh, some manemia hemolytica nine isolates and uh, these are uh, confirmed uh, by specific pcr and uh, uh, by phssa gene as serotype 1 specific uh, manemia hemolytica and also characterized by rp21 and rp22 gene then uh, we also identified uh, isolated uh, more than 46 e coli isolates and these e coli isolates we identified whether these e coli are uh, pathogenic or non pathogenic that we identified by pcr examination and also by sequencing of these isolates so in this study we find that manemia hemolytica 
it is around 10.3%. Then uh, Pashurella multocida, it is around 8%. Uh, then Biberstrenia trihelosi. This is important pathogen. Uh, previously, uh, it is known as Pashurella trihelosi. It is just like Pashurella only, but now it is uh, uh, known as Biberstrenia trihelosi. And we are ignoring this infection. We are only concentrating on Manemia hemolytica and Pasharella multocida. Then we isolated 47 E. coli. And apart from this, around 88 isolates were isolated from various bacterial species. Other isolates were Enterococcus species, Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Corinibacterium. Uh, Cochorea species, Micrococcus species, Macrococcus species, Moraxilla, then Truperella, Pyogenes, and Acinobacter. Among these, it is known that Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, Pseudomonas, Corinibacterium are well known causative agent of pneumonia. These are secondary bacterial infections. But uh, we don't know about these other pathogens, what role they are playing in causing pneumonia. But uh, recently there are many reports that Acinetobacter species is very uh, becoming very pathogenic and drug resistant. Also this Cochorea species is up, upcoming infection. Then we conducted antimicrobial susceptibility testing for uh, Hemolytica and Pasharella multocida on uh, Trihelosi also. So we found that there is around 55% drug resistance uh, like amoxicillin, ciprofloxacin, endrofloxacin, norfloxacin, and oploxacin. These are commonly used antibiotics and uh, uh, we are getting drug resistance for these antibiotics. So while using the antibiotics, you will be cautious, cautious, and if uh, you have facility of AST, antimicrobial susceptibility testing facility is there, then you can use that facility. And after identification of sensitive antibiotic, you should use that antibiotic uh, so that you will get result fast and you can control the infection. Uh, then uh, for gram positive bacteria, we will find that. For cepizim, 68.2% uh, resistance and uh, for amoxicillin and uh, penicillin, it is around uh, 3 to 7%. And we isolated the RNA and tested uh, these samples for para-influenza 3 virus infection by targeting the fusion protein and matrix protein. But uh, we found that all samples were negative for PI3 infection, the specific diseases which are affecting on respiratory systems and causing pneumonia. PPR is well known. In the field, you, uh, you might have getting a lot of cases of PPR. In Rajasthan, PPR is also prevalent. So it is familiar disease. And uh, but the as the mortality is very high, uh, this is most important disease in small ruminants. Uh, both for sheep and goat. Another uh, disease is uh, always neglected uh, in the field, uh, that is ovine pulmonary adenomatosis, OPA. This is chronic disease, that's why this is uh, neglected. But uh, uh, day by day, the economic importance of this disease is increasing because a lot of reports are there in slaughter cases, around 6 to 7 percent incidence is there. So this disease is emerging a disease for India. Then you may not be heard about this enzotic nasal adenocarcinoma. This is, I think, new disease. And many people don't know about this disease. This is just similar to ovine pulmonary adeno, uh, adenomatosis, OPA. Uh, and in India, there is no comprehensive report on enzotic nasal adenocarcinoma. Then another is contagious caprine chlorodemonia. This is also a most important disease of goat. So first uh, we'll discuss about uh, PPR. Uh, as I told, there is a huge mortality 
in PPR, so it is very important. When there is outbreak, you will get heavy mortality. Uh, sometimes it will reach to 80%, but usually it is in between uh, 10 to 20% uh, mortality. Along with heavy mortality, you will find, uh, fi find that high fever, then uh, respiratory, uh, uh, there is uh, discharge from nostrils, uh, and severe diarrhea. So PPR is characterized by severe pneumonia and severe enteritis. Uh, so this disease is reported in 1980 uh, in goats, but before that in 1979, uh, it was first reported uh, by Shaila Itar. And uh, after that, this disease spread uh, in our country and uh, you'll find that uh, uh, this PPR is everywhere. Uh, but uh, for this disease, we have a uh, vaccine developed by IVRI and it has uh, uh, better immunity, means uh, more than two years immunity. So, so coming to the clinical symptoms, uh, here you will uh, uh, find nasal discharge from nose and uh, also or discharge from eyes. Uh, then here you will find a lot of erosions, ulcers, and uh, the important is con congestion of alveolar border of the lip. This is uh, the case uh, in goat severe. Uh, diarrhea is there, shooting diarrhea, and that di uh, diarrhea is blo uh, bloody diarrhea. So uh, uh, in oral cavity, you will also find ulcers. Then uh, uh, there is con uh, congestion uh, of uh, alveolar border. This is characteristic lesion. Then you will also get uh, lesions in hard palate also and soft palate, uh, soft palate, but the lesions uh, severe in abomasum. You will find severe congestion in abomasum. And uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, in large intestine, lesor, uh, lesions are more conspicuous means you will get uh, hemorrhage and congestion, streak of congestion and hemorrhages in small intestine, but uh, these are prominent uh, in uh, large intestine and uh, this uh, uh, lesion is described as zebra striping, but uh, this is not always, you will not get it always in all the cases. Then, as we discussed, uh, 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 you will find such type of pneumonia. Then, uh, uh, the pneumonia is typical type of bronchointestinal type, and in alveoli, you will uh, uh, get. Uh, these intracytoplasmic inclusions in the cells. Here also you can see here, here also eosinophilic inclusion, uh, inclusions. Then in lymph nodes, there is uh, uh, lymphoid depletion, severe lymph lymphoid depletion and uh, uh, there is necrosis and uh, necrosis in me mesentery lymph nodes. This severe uh, uh, lymphocytic, uh, uh, lymph de lymphocytic depletion is characteristic lesion of PPR. Then uh, you can also find inclusions in lips then uh, lymphoid depletion in intestine. This is uh, I, uh, uh, immunohistochemistry. 
you can identify the antigen ppr antigen in various tissues then uh, coming to the diagnosis so presumptive diagnosis can be made on the clinical and pathological lesions and epidemiological findings then uh, virus isolation and characterization of virus uh, then lot of tests are uh, tests are there agid is there cie fat and lot of tests are there but in recent uh, uh, recently people are using pcr specific pcr test and rt pcr test also there are a lot of elisa developed for identification of ppr so this was about uh, ppr uh, coming to the ovarian pulmonary adenocarcinoma it is previously uh, known as pulmonary adenomatosis uh, or ovarian pulmonary carcinoma uh, and uh, it is popularly called as jacksity means chasing sickness in africa uh, the et etiology is jacksity uh, sheep retrovirus and this virus is oncogenic and transforms the alveolar and bronchiolar epithelium into neoplasia the species affected are primarily sheep and uh, you will also get uh, uh, some cases few cases in goats so you are in goats uh, uh, you will find rare cases of opa so it is uh, widely distributed in europe africa and america including india uh, <clears throat> and if you see if there is outbreak first outbreak they there there will be 80% case fatality rate but uh, in subsequent years the uh, the uh, fatality rate will be uh, decreasing and it will be around 20% Uh, the incubation period is six months to three years, and the clinical sim symptoms. If uh, if you see clinical si symptoms, generally it is occurring two to four years age of animals. Uh, there will be progressive emaciation, weight loss, and uh, respiratory compromise, particularly when uh, when the uh, uh, when the uh, animal. Uh, 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 go fast or uh, uh, that time uh, you will find uh, the respiratory compromise the uh, labored breathing and like that uh, these affected sheep always lag behind the flock and uh, uh, you will find thin mucus discharge from the nostrils and if the head is lower a copious frothy exudate may pour from the nares so uh, you will see here this is colloquially uh, this taste is called as will borrow taste uh, if you uh, if you hold this animal like this uh, the fluid uh, from nostrils will be there you can collect fluid in in a jar so this is uh, a taste to identify opa clinical test then if you do post mortem examination you will uh, find that uh, these lungs are very much enlarged and uh, uh, these lungs will uh, do not collapse due to tumors uh, then for the fluid also you can see uh, in the trachea and bronchi then you will find solid mass of tumors like this and some small uh, nodules also there white nodules then on the cut surface also you will find the small nodules and <clears throat> generally metastasis is in the nearby lymph nodes not in other organs so pathologically uh, uh, you can find uh, the foci of adenoma ad adenocarcinoma 
lot of uh, places you can find this adenocarcinoma then papillomatous this uh, particularly these epithelial cells uh, of uh, these alveoli will convert into papillomatous growth and it will occlude the lumen of alveoli so uh, you can see these finger like projections everywhere along with this there is inflammatory response you will find macrophages lymphocytes and other plasma cells then uh, there is uh, no test uh, uh, for identification molecular uh, this uh, there is no flock test for uh, this opi identification uh, because elisa is not available then virus you cannot isolate the virus so the, uh, you you will diagnose the disease on the basis of clinical signs gross lesion uh, lesions uh, histopathology um, and immunohistochemistry but uh, uh, recently there is u3 gene gene pcr uh, which is giving good results in our laboratory uh, we developed uh, this assay for diagnosis of opa uh, and we conducted a study on 75 lungs and uh, we found that 8% or 8% uh, sheep are uh, uh, affected by uh, this uh, opa uh in eight uh, in eight sheep there are two sheep uh, that sheep uh, were of 3 uh, to 6 months of age and did not show clinical signs or gross lesions on post mortem examination and four adult sheep were uh, uh, was uh, severely affected and uh, uh, we get characteristics lesions of opa on gross and histopathological examination so uh, for for the diagnosis we developed this pcr and uh, it was uh, uh, this pcr is uh, found very sensitive and it can detect uh, clinical cases and also uh, sub clinical cases of opa next is enzotic nasal adenocarcinoma new uh, you can say new disease because no comprehensive reports on this disease uh, are in india and uh, previous year we encountered uh, two outbreaks of ena in tonk district and uh, jaipur district this ena is ca caused by enzotic nasal tumor virus entv and it is genetically uh, genetically related to jsrv virus and there are two type of virus uh, entv1 which cause neoplasm in sheep and entv2 which cause neoplasm in goats uh, this uh, disease was first reported in 1980s after that uh, it is observed in some countries except australia new zealand and united kingdom in india uh, as i told there is no comprehensive report Uh, and uh, there is uh, no uh, confirmation of entv virus from sheep or goat generally prevalence uh, is ranging from uh, 0.1% to 0.3% and uh, sometimes it is very high and it will go up to 15% and uh, no genetic sex or breed predisposition has been reported in this disease i was talking about the outbreak of this uh, ena in tonk district and jaipur district so total 600 sheep were affected and uh, there was 10 to 12% mortality and morbidity was around 20% first clinical symptom is that uh, signs is that unilateral or bilateral protrusion of eyeball then uh, these eye lesions uh, were very extensive with loss of natural reflexes and loss of vision uh, glaucoma is there then mouth breathing frothy salivation sometimes the animal is circling and uh, there is rapid muscle uh, muscle wasting is there uh, 
uh, and we found that uh, the location of the tumors was in olfactory mucosa of ethmoid cartilage and uh, this growing tumor uh, compressed upon the walls of nasal cavity and exalt and this uh, uh, protrusion of eyeball is resulted uh, here you can see uh, the pro protrusion of eyeball unilateral protrusion of eyeball and uh, there is complete loss of vision no reflexes at all in another case you can see right eye is protruded in comparison to left left eye from some ship we also uh, collected um, the nasal discharge and uh, that discharge we stained by may grenwald jimsa stain and uh, we find that these tumor cells means clumps of tumor cells and on the basis of that uh, we diagnosed it as nasal carcinoma uh, we conducted some two three postmortems uh, those sheep we got uh, died in the field and we conducted the postmortem after uh, opening uh, these uh, terminate bones this nasal cavity is found occluded with tumor Uh, you can see the tumorous growth here, and uh, in this ENA, it is it it is reported that uh, there is no metastasis in any organ. Only the tumors are uh, limited to the uh, terminate bones. But we found that in lungs also there is tumor uh, tumorous mass. You can see here, this is cut surface with uh, necrotic debris. and bloody exudate uh, we process these samples uh, for histopathology in lungs we we find uh, the similar lesions like opa uh, these alveoli with papillomatous proliferation and infiltration of mononuclear cells giving adenomatous appearance similar like opa then uh, in lung uh, these uh, nasal tumors we find similar changes like lungs these uh, cases were confirmed uh, in the laboratory by gag gen pcr this pcr, PCR we uh, uh, standardized in the laboratory and uh, we identified gag gen by pcr also uh, we standardized real time pcr and uh, identify this infection so this was about uh, ena then uh, coming to uh, contagious capran uh, pleuronemonia in rajasthan i have not seen this infection much and in field also uh, there are very uh, less uh, cases of cccp so this infection is caused by mycoplasma capriculum subspecies caprinemoni the morbidity is 100% and sometimes mortality goes very high it is 80 to 100% and it is widely prevalent in around 40 countries and in india it is also prevalent the first disease reported in algeria and it is also called as bow frida the disease spread by direct contact and aerosol routes there are uh, three form of the disease one is per acute form second is acute form and the third is chronic form so in per acute form uh, there is a sudden death within 24 to 72 hours and uh, clinical symptoms are absent there is no clinical symptoms but in acute form and uh, chronic form you will get these re respiratory symptoms and other clinical signs the clinical symptoms are uh, anorexia depression dyspnea fever coughing nasal discharge lagging behind lying down and thoracic pain are also reported uh, and other signs include inspiratory dyspnea accompanied by grunting sound and snoring sound in uh, some reports they have given Uh, the clinical symptoms as continuous nasal discharge which is initially serofibrinous straw colored 
followed by thick mucoid or purulent and rust colored might be observed here you can see these are uh, downloaded from internet uh, so here you can see the severe nasal discharge then uh, this pleura is thickened and always there is unilateral consolidation of the lungs so this one side lung is not affected but other side is heavily affected enlarged and uh, with thickened pleura and uh, on the cut surface uh, you can find uh, find the typical picture like marbling then uh, in microscopic lesions you will find septal peribronchiolar fibrosis in 82% to 82% then uh, fibrinous pleuritis in 64% then peribronchiolar cuffing of inflammatory mononuclear cells 55% and uh, in the pneumonia the macrophages are the main cells followed by neutrophils along with few pulmonary fibrin deposits then uh, this uh, pneumonia is typically bronchointestinal pneumonia with emphysema and atelectasis of alveoli then thickening of interlobular septa then proteinous material deposition in alveoli which is a uh, characteristic of ccpp here you can uh, see the proteinaceous material this is characteristic of ccpp uh, so uh, thick interlobular septa thickened interlobular septa and a uh, lot of uh, inflammatory cells are there then diagnosis of this disease can be done by clinical signs gross and histopathology and uh, you can isolate organism uh, but the isolation is very difficult because uh, this is a somewhat fastidious organism and require special uh, grow, growth media and special facility should be there for isolation of uh, mycoplasma so somewhat uh, difficult to is isolate but this is gold standard method to confirm the disease but uh, you can diagnose this disease by elisa fat cft and indirect hemagglutination test nowadays uh, this pcr test is very uh, popular and uh, c elisa is al also popular uh, to conclude this topic before concluding this topic uh, we we'll think about uh, some recommendations uh, to curtail this problem so if you want to prevent the pneumonia first remove the predisposing factor first identify which is the predisposing factor suppose your feed is powdery form so that may be causing the initial sensitization for uh, pneumonia so uh, you should change your feed suppose there is severe cold in winter season and uh, uh, you will get uh, mortality in lambs so you should protect the lambs from severe cold so uh, first first of all you should remove the predisposing factors then identify uh, the lambs which are having these uh, pneumonic symptoms and you isolate them and uh, treat with uh, the antibiotic antibiotic treatment along with electrolytes and other supportive therapeutics then you can give adequate uh, supplementation of selenium, uh, selenium and vitamin e uh, it will definitely help in reducing the outbreak of pneumonia cases of pneumonia then ensure the proper feeding of lambs i am talking of lambs because this pneumonia is uh, uh, very much important in lambs and causing a uh, lot of deaths in lambs so uh, you should be very critical about uh, the feeding of lambs and uh, you should ensure that sufficient amount of colostrum to each and every lamb is given then ensure that the animal has dry bedding good feed clean water and fresh air this is very important uh, actually uh, fact that you should avoid overcrowding in the sheds 
then there should be adequate ventilation then uh, your nutrition should be good nutrition so uh, there will not be immunosuppression and they, uh, there will not be uh, pneumonic cases then avoid wet conditions in the shed and maintain all sanitary and hygienic practices to reduce ammonia build up in the shed as we know pneumonia is a multi etiological condition there is no such commercial vaccination is available for pneumonia but you should follow vaccination schedule strictly for specific important and emerging diseases according to schedule so that you can limit the infection so thank you very much